Welcome to Indio, California. Golden Boy Promotions on the air, a home away from home, about two hours east of downtown Los Angeles and the headquarters for Oscar De Loyal's Golden Boy Promotions, Bethel Duran, alongside Steve Kim. A lot of fights coming your way tonight. And our first one is in the ring. Right there, you see him in the blue corner. That is Yardley Suarez, the opponent for Sacramento, taking on Ryan Martin, undefeated fighter from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Thanks for everybody joining us on ringtv.com around the world. Our first bout tonight, eight rounds, this scheduled in the lightweight division. This bout is presented by K2 Promotions with our sponsors Tecate and Casa Mexico Tequila. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing gray trunks, trimmed in black, he weighed an officially 134 and three quarter pounds. In 24 professional bouts, his record stands at 19 victories. Five defeats with 10 wins by way of knockout from Sacramento, California. Here is and his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner wearing black trimmed in white he weighed an officially 134 and one half pounds in 17 professional bouts he stands perfect with 17 victories no defeats 10 wins by way of knockout fighting out of and representing chattanooga tennessee here is the undefeated ryan in charge of the action, Rudy Barragan. Rudy Barragan, third man in the ring. This one's eight rounds in the lightweight division. On the eve of Bernard Hopkins, final one in Inglewood, California at the Forum. Opening bout tonight, Ryan Martin, undefeated fighter. He's 17 and 0 from Chattanooga, Tennessee. He's in the black trunks, but he now trains in Cleveland, Ohio, does Martin. Yarley Suarez, originally born in Sacramento, California, but he grew up in Los Mochis, Sinaloa. That is where he now lives and trains. And Steve, you mentioned Los Mochis. You know some fighters come out of there. They come out swinging. Well, the ones that really stand out the most, obviously, is the Montiel family. Uh, going back to Ryan Martin really quickly, you talked about his background. For much of this camp leading into this fight, Beto, he was up there at the summit of Abel Sanchez, helped prepare Dennis Shafikov for his victory over Richard Comey. Got some really good work in there throughout the last couple of months. And Abel Sanchez is in his corner right now. You mentioned the name Abel Sanchez later on as our main event. Sullivan Barrera was with Abel Sanchez, no longer with him. And Barrera and Vyacheslav Shabransky will be the main event tonight in Indio, California. Good shots landed. Redness underneath the left eye of Suarez here in the first round. As Ryan Martin, maybe that altitude in Big Bear really helping him out. He looks fresh here and sharp to start the opening round. But uh, you look at him physically, just 23 years old. The thing that really stands out, he is built the way a lightweight should be. Tall, lean, lanky, good musculature. Only, again, a very, very young guy was stuck in SMS Purgatory, signed with 50 Cent a couple of years ago. And basically that company has really imploded. It does not currently exist. His manager, Timothy Van Newhouse, trying to work out a, an agreement with K2 Promotions and Tom Loeffler, who placed him on this show, which is a Golden Boy card tonight. Martin in the black trunks, nicknamed Blue Chip, just like a Blue Chip prospect in football or Blue Chip stock. Give it to him by his manager early on in his career. He said, this is a kid you want to buy stock in early. He's now 17 and 0 with, with 10 KOs, going to the body, going upstairs with the uppercut. Really controlling this round with anything he wants to do, huh? No, he does. But one thing he has is an educated left hand. You can see him pumping out that jab. The lead trainer is Joe Delgua. Now, I've talked to him in the past. They believe that Ryan Martin, within a year, if they stick in about 20 to 23 fights, they believe that within due time, sooner rather than later, if he lands another combination, that they will be able to start going big game hunting at 135. It's a big kid at 135. Yarley Suarez was in the ring two weeks ago. Got a decision 
I was in Mexico. So they called him last minute, about 10 days ago, which would be last minute for a guy like Ryan Martin. Said, yeah, I'll take a fight. I'm already in shape. Let's go. Asked if he knew much about Martin. He's like, nah, I just know he's undefeated. Well, he's learning quickly. Blue chip. It looks like the real deal. Good combination. 10 seconds. Oh, Ryan Martin in the opening round. It is scheduled for eight. Our opening bout of Golden Boy Promotions in Indio, California. take a look at some of the action from round number one, Beto. You can see some of the hand speed and some of the advantages that Martin really has on Yardley Suarez. Number one being, not only is he technically a little bit sharper, also big disparity in speed that was shown in round number one. Martin in the black trunks. Started boxing at the age of eight. His older brother was in the gym. He just followed his brother to the gym. You know, hey, you, know you look athletic. You play any other sports? No. Boxing. I was in. And then his uh, trainer jumped in and said, he should be a college free safety right now. <laughs> he literally has a bill. Good snapping right. Body shot. Good one, too. From Blue Chip Martin in the black trunks. This is a name I've heard of, Steve, around the box. I think you've written about it a little yeah. bit. You know, when he signed with SMS with high hopes, uh, like a lot of guys that sign with these hip-hop entities, they get a selfie and they might get an album, but they don't get much of a career in 2015. He was basically shelved for the second half of the year. Now fast forward to 2016. This is his fourth bout of the year. The last fought September 10th at the Forum, winning an eight rounder against Cesar Villaraga. So I think they're getting the horse back onto the track, getting him running again. You can see the skills here. Very well built, got the requisite skill set. I think what you need now is seasoning. And I think the work he got in Big Bear this past camp, uh, I think has been invaluable. Now the, the camp with Abel Sanchez up there with Triple G and just the work ethic from everybody. It, it, as you told me, Steve, it, you go around and you see professional athletes who are doing what you're doing. It just makes yeah. you push yourself. And right now, Ryan Martin is just snapping that jab anytime he wants, controlling this fight. Body work, downstairs, upstairs. More body work. And you can hear these punches landing. Yeah, and Martin is really committing with both hands, both sides, downstairs, left-handed, and also with the left hook. But it has to be mentioned, during the time that he was at the summit this past month or so, the likes of Denis Shapikov, he was preparing for Kome. Murad Gassiev was preparing for a, a title shot against Denis Lebedev, a fight that he won. Also, Andy Ruiz was preparing for, for his bout against Joseph Parker that he lost via majority decision last week in New Zealand. Suarez trying to come back with some shots, but there's nothing behind his punches because the body work from Martin yeah. taking out Suarez. Uppercut landed by Martin. Body work. I really like the way he's going to the body here. You know, Beto, he could probably outbox him from the perimeter using his jab, but I think Martin's made a decision here. He might be trying for the late stop and taking some of the air out of the tires early on, really investing downstairs early to the soft underbelly of Suarez. Favorite fighter, Sugar Ray Leonard. For Ryan Martin. Good hook. 10 seconds to go in the second round. Another strong round with the 23-year-old Ryan Martin. Okay. 
the gentleman right on over that they got the old bull area. Where you see the red wolves, gold poles, where you can start lining up with your camera. Now we take a look at some of the action from round number two. There's a good, solid, stiff jab right up the middle from Ryan Martin. That's been the foundation of his game. But in round number two, invested a lot to the body, but you get the sense at this point, Beto, Anytime he wants to land that jab, that hard stick to begin his attack, it's there for him all night. And in between rounds, referee Rudy Barragan called over the doctor. They actually stopped time. That's why this in between seems a little bit longer. They stopped time. They had the doctor evaluate Yarley Suarez, and they asked him the date twice. <laughs> And uh, Barragan was there. The doctor said, yes, let's keep a close eye on him. Suarez's corner immediately told him, they're going to stop this fight. You need to do something. You know, keep in mind with Suarez, record of 19-5. and five. He's a seasoned guy. On his ledger are losses to highly regarded Mark McSayo, Andy Vences, a uh, top-ranked prospect, Dennis Galarza, and Albert Mercado, who stopped him in two, who at that point had a record of 14-0. and zero. So he's not... He is not a stranger to facing highly regarded prospects. And that's why that round was a little bit longer. They stopped it to get the doctor in there, so they still get the full one minute. Rudy Barragan, veteran referee, keeping a close eye on the young fighter, Suarez. Hook landed by Martin here in the black trunks, opening up the third. And he lands those punches with authority, Steve. No, he really does. And also, in addition to quickness, I also like the technique. It's very straight, very compact, not a lot of fat on his punches. The punches, you just look at it, and they just look well-delivered. Make up for some lost time. You mentioned it. He was on the shelf for a while. Body work. Blood coming down from the nose of Suarez. One, two, as he... Lands those shots, the corner of Suarez saying, throw, do something. You know, it's hard to throw, though, when a jab is in your face consistently. When you're beat to the punch time and time again and snapping your head back, if you're not a natural counterpuncher, and if you can't slip that jab like you did right there, very difficult to actually do that, throw. Tira mas, throw more with the instructions for Suarez from the corner. You know, they, they could say throw more, but I think but very important. He's got to be the aggressor. He's got to initiate the attack. He's just getting beat to the punch, whether it's on the inside or the outside, almost making it impossible for him to actually punch alongside Martin. More body work. Effective body work. One, two, good combination from Martin. He said in a second, he's going to take the air out of the tires. These tires are low profile. They're on on the rim right now. Well, and the question is, does he have a spare in the trunk? No. I, I think one of the issues is not only is Martin faster, he's also probably the better pure puncher of the two. And again, just keeps consistently beating him to the punch. Countering with the hook is Suarez. A little bit of blood from the nose now of Martin here in the third. Stiff jab, Martin. I like those combinations. First time I've seen him, Brian Martin. Yeah. No wasted effort on him. No, and you know, if Martin wanted to make this fight really easy, he could literally just stay off on the perimeter and work off that left hand and work from this distance. I, I get the sense, though, again, he wants to finish the year with the stoppage and really make a statement before heading into 2017. Chattanooga own Ryan Martin. Speaking of Chattanooga, if you talk to his manager, the young Timothy Van Newhouse, he really believes that this kid's skill set is a good uppercut. They believe what Terrence Crawford is in Omaha, that blue chip can be in Chattanooga. Really? A very strong regional draw. Three good rounds for Ryan Martin. Right 
Then go to the double, go to the scoop, and turn that sucker over, okay? And when you turn it over, we're going to start bringing the, the left hand through. And we take a look at some of the work between Martin and Suarez. Once again, another very good inning for Ryan Martin, who just simply was a little bit too sharp and a little bit too clean for Yardley Suarez here in round number three. The theme of the night has been very simple. It's been the jab, and he's been able to consistently beat Suarez to the punch, and you see him again digging downstairs to the body, which he's done since the beginning of round number one. We keep hearing the corner of Yardley Suarez saying, do something, throw something. <laughs> How about this one? Rosito Montes, a former pro fighter, his trainer, told him, you need to be aggressive. Are you scared? Yep. What are you doing? Well, he turned around to Rudy Barragan and said, watch him. If he's not doing anything, stop the fight. And Montes looked at Suarez, they're like, what are you doing? He's like, do something here. Well, Suarez, if he wants to get off, has to be the aggressor. In this tone, I'm, I'm just... And there again. he goes, a left hook by Ryan Martin, drops him here early in the fourth round. And Beto, the problem is, in playing aggressor, you're actually going right into the meat grinder and waiting for those really fast hands of Ryan Martin. They're watching him closely. They've been doing this since a second. Keep your hands up, they're telling him. And Martin's coming in to finish it. He's coming in with... Vicious shots. He's game, and that is it. Uri Barragan jumps in, protects the young Yarly Suarez, and Ryan Martin gets a fourth round stoppage on our opening bout from Indio, California. Beto, I thought that was a pretty impressive performance. As we like to say, that was the Chris Rock. He did what he's supposed to, but what do we say? It's not if you win, it's how you win. Thought that from the very opening bell, he took control of this fight, was the dominant figure, and really showed his class from the very beginning. And every round, widened that distance between the two. Ryan Martin fighting out a strong style, old school boxing club. That fits with him. And we take a look at the beginning of the end here for Yardley Suarez. It was a, this one two actually missed, but that two punch combination, the jab right cross landed and really started to begin to hasten the demise of Yardley Suarez, who at that point was really being swarmed by Ryan Martin, who really set the tone early. You got the sense, Beto, he was not going to be content with an eight-round decision like he had back in September tonight. Abel Sanchez beating the Friday traffic, getting here for the <laughs> 5 p.m. start. And Ryan Martin was 4-0 on the year, and my understanding is is that when Gennady Golovkin fights against somebody on St. Patrick's Day weekend in New York, he will be on that undercard. So, very, very bright future for Ryan Martin as they've gotten his career back on track in 2016. Go to ring out to Joe Martinez. to the official time, 48 seconds, round number four. Referee Rudy Barragan puts a halt to this bout. Your winner declared by KO victory and still undefeated Ryan Martin. <laughs> Chattanooga, Tennessee's own and training in Cleveland, Ohio's Ryan Martin Blue Chip. Now 18 and 0, his 11th stoppage of his career. Like Just, I was telling you, Steve, I heard of him, but I really hadn't seen him, and it was more of his outside of the ring yeah. stuff that was going on. You mentioned because of the business side. You know, tonight, listen, let, let's not overblow this. It's not like as if he fought Jose Luis Castillo, but sometimes you, a young prospect, when you see him, does he pass the eye test? I, I think tonight against a seasoned trial horse that's been in there with other blue chip prospects, uh, I would say tonight was a passing grade for the blue chip. Certainly look like a stock you want to buy some futures in. Beth the Duran, Steve Kim, we're in Indio, California on the eve of the final one. Bernard Hopkins, 51 year old. Bernard Hopkins, future Hall of Famer, is the main event Saturday night in, in, in Inglewood, California at the Forum. And 
Bernard taking on Joe Smith out of Strong Island, Long Island, he said. And that was one where Bernard was really loquacious at his final press conference. And Bernard has some footage with the Ring TV cameras. 